you've met her, I'm sure, many times. Um, she was a talented radio presenter, talented singer, and lots of other things too. Um, inter she has an interpretation service, for example, for condo AGMs and court trials, and um, she's registered with the Patia Provincial Court uh, as an interpreter. She does legal consultations criminal and civil and the condo act and today she i think the subject is mainly about condominium so please would you welcome condrose good morning ladies and gentlemen can you hear me okay it's an honor to be back here again. Last time I talked about what stays in the court. Uh, what happened in the court stays in the court. <laughs> that was, I think, it's over one year ago, right? And today uh, is about, uh, about condominium related issues or, or uh, knowledge or information that maybe help quite many people here. Uh, my name is Rose, as been in introduced. Uh, forget my full name, but my full name anyway is Chaya Chon Riti Rantana, but please call me Rose. Uh, firstly, uh, English is not my mother language, but I'll try my very best. So if any point that I start confusing you, please stop me at any time. And if I go so fast, then that's not my nature. <laughs> So please slow me down, okay? Secondly, I am not a lawyer. Far from it, far from it. Being a lawyer, you have to have a lot of uh, responsibility, but I'm having a lot of laziness in me. So, but I've been working with so many lawyers in town and some in England, in, in Bangkok as well. Uh, so I have learned quite many, many things in many aspects that it can come to help myself and help a lot of people here and everywhere outside. But today we talk about the condominiums, which is uh, your home away from home, actually. That when the foreigners come to Thailand, most of you, the first thing you think about finding a place you can settle down with or without your loved ones at a time. And uh, yes, Condominium, foreigners' real homes away from home. Why, I'm say, why I say it's real? Because you can have free home to own it in your, your own name, in foreign ownership, which uh, the updated issue four of the Condominium Act uh, increased the percentage of foreign ownership from 40, in the, in the 90s, it was 40% to 49, as most of you and I think everybody knows here. Uh, so this is about condominium. Now, when we talk about condominiums, then just like everywhere you stay, you're gonna have to know your rights, your responsibility, and also maybe your limitation as well, just like individual need to know. Uh, when, you, when you buy a condominium, may I ask how many, how many uh, people here that have bought the, Condominium unit, one, two, three, four, uh, quite a lot, yes. So, do you have a lot of problem in your condominium project? Not really, so that's why you have. <laughs> you have, right? I, I was asked to go attend the meeting yesterday, uh, and the condominium here is so small, but the, juristic, the developer registered juristic person to be separate for juristic persons in one small territory. So you can imagine how difficult about bookkeeping, about uh, running and about trying to collect the money from co-owners from the different uh, buildings in the same small area, the different juristic persons. So now we have to know your, uh, you have to know your rights, your responsibilities. A lot of people want to know the rights, but they don't want to know, don't want to know responsibilities and limitations. So uh, in one condominium project, when it has been registered as the condominium juristic person already, not just 
when it start construct uh, being constructed by the developer, that is the, 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 the state before you become juristic person of condominium. When you become when the condominium project become juristic person, then it's that there basically there are three status. We want you as a co owner or you as a member of juristic person uh, and you as other status just like you can be co-owner as well and you can have the business relation with the juristic person as well, something like that. As a co-owner, you have to know your rights. Your rights is that you own, you own common properties and common facilities. Apart from your own unit, right? Some of the foreigners thought that what is my ownership ratio proportion in this in this condominium project or condominium yeah project and and what do I actually own? Uh, actually, you own the con common properties. You own swimming pools. You own the landscape. Uh, the landscape. Uh, you own the the roads. As long as those those facilities and properties are situated on the title deed that belong to you, means belong to the condominium juristic person. Most of the time, the co-owners found out 20 years later that the project roads or the common roads is not situated on your own uh, uh, title deed. It doesn't belong to you all. It belongs to someone else, belongs to the developer. And, but the law said when you create something, developer have to have the place for access, uh, like a servitude right, something like that. It's just so many, so many issues that many people find out later. And as long as it's here before you find out something, it's difficult for you to make yourself understand how, how it come to this far, how it come to this, this mess, and how can we get ourselves out of this situation. Uh, okay, as a member of touristic person, some of you may, be, may have been elected to be the committee members in the board and then you have to be wearing two hats one as a co-owner who used to point fingers to the committee board right <laughs> and start the problem more or less and the other time when you be when you are elected to be the committee board member then you have to wear the hat of the committee members then you have to dedicate your time because this is a voluntary job there is no no salary, no allowance. Well, allowance maybe depends on the agreement inside the committee, each committee, or, or each condominium project. So, as other status, this is just like uh, employees of the juristic person or the contractor that get contracted, get obligated to provide service, just like internet, Wi-Fi, internet, and uh, TVs. No satellite at the moment, no more satellite, I believe. Okay, juristic person or juristic management and the co owner. The relation between this, who is the biggest in one condominium project? Co owners, right? But not as an individual, co owner as a whole, as the, uh, the unit. Uh, and then come down to the committee. And then come down to juristic person manager, and then down to employees and then contractors. Okay. Uh, the, as many of you know, that the committee is supposed to be start from three members in the board and maximum nine members in the board. And how many? How many that's suitable for your condominium project? That is depend. That depends on your 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 the business that, that the committee have to take care of. Juristic person manager, in some in some condominium project, juristic person manager just like God, just like the king, do whatever she or he wants to do. Actually, is wrong. Juristic person manager have to work under the resolution of the committee board, which doesn't mean that the juristic person manager have to listen to individual committee member. But the committee work as a team, right, and uh, resolve the resolution. And then that resolution have to guide the JPM, juristic, uh, juristic person manager, guide the JPM what to do. 
and committee resolution must be under the direction of the co-owners resolution at the general meeting, whether it's annual general meeting once a year or extraordinary general meetings. So most of the times, with the very lousy management uh, standard or management, they never really have any record of the previous minutes of the meetings of the general meetings or extraordinary ordinary general meetings. So co-owners who step in later, you have no guideline, you don't know what is being resolved before to do or not to do. It's that, that's why so many problems occur and start. Uh, the first first management or the first first committee and first first JPM actually are the most important person who are going to set the proper guideline for the following committee boards and JPMs. Uh, by law, committee only stay and uh, stay in the office for two years, right? For one term, two years. But you can do two sec uh, consecutive terms, as most of you know already. But the JPM, actually the law doesn't limit the term of JPM. JPM can stay forever. It's only by the regulation of what you call by law of each condominium, maybe it's fixed the term of the JPM, but the act, condominium act doesn't, uh, doesn't limit the term of JPM because it's very hard to find a good JPM. And sometimes if you, uh, this is exactly from the land official herself told me before she got promoted to Bangkok, Sorry. Oh yes, thank you, juristic person. Uh, this is another thing. Sometimes you call juristic person. Sometimes you call juristic entity. Uh, when you establish your company to do any business, that is the juristic person. It's a person that accepts by law to have duty, have responsibility, have right just like an individual, physical person like us, um, have the name, just like company has the name. Uh, number one company, uh, com company limited. Uh, that is a commercial, commercial related, juristic person. They have to pay tax, incoming tax, they have to pay VAT sometimes. But condominium is under Cond condominium act, you will be under uh, the consideration of land office and we are non-profitable non -profitable entity and we are still juristic person which means that it's a person accepted by law but it's nobody like you and I we have body so is that clear enough? <coughs> but you still have to obey the law and comply with the law and do whatever that the law state you to, to do and you have freedom to do anything to earn income uh, mostly the income of the condominium uh, juristic person is only from common fee collection. And if that's not enough, the good management, we have the good policy and strong policy to find extra income. As long as most of the thing is, as long as everything is fair and also under the exception and approval of the co-owners and everything is supposed to be uh, proposed to the co-owners at the general meeting can be annual general meeting or extraordinary general meeting for them to approve or for them to accept. Then the co-owners lay the guideline for the committee and the committee set up the specific uh, resolution for the JPM to follow. In some situation, just like I just talked to one condo yesterday, I was asked to go into a meeting the condo very near, very near, I'm not going to say close, very near the land office here in Bangalore. And this condo has been, uh, has, has been registered since 17 years ago. Never had committee board until 2017. <laughs> and I was, wow, I've been helping quite a lot of medical, many condominium projects. This one is the worst. And it's only seven, uh, 2017 that they start, start having the first condominium uh, juristic person committee board. Uh, about seven, over 700 units. And then the management has been co under control of one person who based in Bangkok as a lawyer. And then set the puppet here in Pattaya and run the office. 
here and there and collect the rest. This is from what the co-owners told me yesterday, okay? I haven't, I haven't had any chance to investigate the fact yet. It's just that uh, they're making the rent, rental business in the office of the touristic person. The money is not for the touristic person. It means the money, the income is not for all the co-owners, not for the best benefit of co-owners, etc., etc. Excuse me. So that is that is one of the issues that I've been uh, asked to help. Sometimes I could help all the way by spending lots of time. Uh, like I used to be a tourist person manager for a jumping complex. I used to be there for four years. And then I used to be a tourist person manager. I, I'm going to say JPM, okay? Uh, JPM for Paradise Condominium. And then uh, a beach and mountain condominium in Bangsare, which was a very, very tough condominium. So, a uh, person manager works with legal issue. Juristic person manager or JPM, the duty of JPM is to make sure that the everything runs smoothly and legally. Not about electric cut or water cut, that building manager. Building manager is the employee of the JP, juristic person. And JPM, juristic person manager, is the one who gonna run business on behalf of the committee board. Because committee board, like five or six or nine of them, they can't just everybody run around and try to try to uh, tell people what to do. That's why committee resolve the resolution and JPM take that and make it happen. And anything happen, anything that need to be uh, get need to be getting the guidance that JPM supposed to report to the committee and ask the committee to call the committee meeting and then the committee will consider everything whatever JPM report and then committee will resolve the resolution and give the JPM the authority what to do and what not to do this is the correct way but so far so many condominium projects is not like that JPM is a god <laughs> Well, well in, in, in some situation when there is no committee board, just like this condo I just mentioned, for about 16 years there was no committee board. So the JPM had to take care of the business. That's why, that's why there's no another authority to come to balance the authority of the JPM. And that's why things go wrong and messy. The money has been disappeared and everything. I'm not saying that every JPM, JPM is bad. But this is a very, very tempting situation, right? When everything comes easily, you are the only one to take control. So believe me, it's just something like that still happening here in Pattaya, and I was called to attend the meeting yesterday. And now I'm gonna have to start getting the document and start investi investigating. Uh, okay, next, for your own protection, what you must know, you know a little bit what I, talk, what I just talked about. Uh, and then you need to know if you about if you are about to buy the condominium unit in any project, what you must know. Do you think the only see the brochure, talk to the salesperson, look around the project, is that enough? Right? That is the, the first question. I used to work with an, another lawyer in another case, lawyer in Bangkok, and then tech team with lawyer in Pattaya. Because uh, um, the people bought into this condominium project. It's not only one, quite a few. They found out later, just like I mentioned before, that the land was not even belong to the to the co-owners, was not belong to the choosing person. And then the, the, the land, the development, the developer hired a snakely and sold this to someone else. And then they have to have a legal case lawsuit fighting against one another. So you need to know many things actually for your own sake. You need to know the, uh, the laws and regulations around that area. Is this the, the zoning uh, that high rise building supposed to have EIA uh, report before getting the license, per, uh, the, per, uh, the construction license, et cetera, et cetera. Is, it, is the EIA been approved already? Et cetera, et cetera. You need to know quite a lot. Which if you just came from another country, or your friend just came from another country, you can help the guideline, and then after that, should talk to legal advice. Once, it's not gonna hurt your pocket much, a few thousand baht, maybe. Just get information, the right information. What's, what you must have, 
when you start buying or when you bought into the condominium unit, uh, condominium project, sorry, you, the first thing you need to have, apart from all the information about the developer, you need to know the developer's background too. How bad is that? Because in Pattaya, just like so many people, so many places, one developer, she, uh, one person set up a few companies, a few names, and develop piece of land to be condominiums or housing project. I'm just talking about condominium. condominium. And I saw this developer running in and out of court almost every week, more often than I do in the court, <laughs> and the in independent court, interpreter. And I said, hey, what are you doing here? Oh, it's another case. I'm okay. Oh, another case, I'm okay. Because uh, maybe the developer is honest, but because lack of knowledge and lack of information, lack of guidance, there is something wrong at the beginning. And this big project, when you put the first button wrong, and you can imagine the falling buttons, right? That is gonna be absolutely wrong, and it's hard, and the consequence is fall down to the co-owners. Some, de some developer uh, construct, construct the, the condominium next to someone else's territory or boundary of houses, and then start making objects falling down to someone's houses. I've been in, in, in involved in that case too. And then, it's okay about what he's doing in his own project, but the house that got damaged, suing him, calling trouble through the authorities, Pattaya City Hall, and stop the project from continuing, and stop the project from being, get, uh, being able to get the construction license. All this, you need to really put your ears and your eyes open and check the neighborhoods, listen to the listen to the, the bird, the way that the birds are uh, speaking to you, the way that the gecko is speaking to you, you know what I mean? Check around, check the EIA that has been approved or not, who is the one who made the EIA report? Because, uh, let me tell you that, there is a couple uh, company that uh, provide EIA report to big condominium project is owned by one connect, connection and uh, they will make up some lousy questionnaires what is your uh, to, to ask the people around the project just to make to make sure that they answer anything and then they will get approved by EIA uh, council uh, commission uh, some lousy questions just like what is your ask the bars and ask the restaurant around the, the target uh, uh, land that about to be developed. They will ask a question just like I saw this and I've been trying to just argue with this myself when I was a JPM. Something like, what is your in what is your income rate a month? And what is your graduation? It's nothing to do with environment at all. For about 50 or 20 or 30 questions in the questionnaire, nothing really have anything to do with the environment or environment impact. So but this is too deep for you to think about at the moment. And maybe you bought a condominium already and you're happy, that's okay. But this is what you must know at the beginning. If you don't know, get the lawyer to help you, get someone to help you. Uh, what you must do, oh, what you must have, when you bought a condo, you must have regulations or by law in your language. In Thailand, we said it's only in Thai, but if the condominium have enough budget, they may provide you in your language, in English, in, uh, in French, in Russian. But if not, you have to try your best to try to translate that so for your own uh, awareness and, and acknowledgement of what is said. Um, yesterday, again, uh, the condominium had been registered for almost 18 years. The co-owners who came to me yesterday, most of them still never seen the regulations or by law. And of course, they said it never been any annual meeting apart until two years ago, 2017. And still many things wrong. They never sent out the proper invitation letter either. They never had, the office never had email address. Imagine that, you know? So for seven, some, for 700 something units, it's only about 20 people attend the meeting. So, so-called meeting and then I said that, okay, I have to wait and see the document from the land office first before I can give another guide, guidance. Uh, what you must do as a co-owner, you must pay your common fee. 
Either you like it or not. Either you're happy with the management or not. You're going to have to continue paying your compound fee. Whatever that you have problem with the management, just take it out in the other way. You cannot stop paying common fee because that you dispute your own rights and your own responsibility. Because the condominium act states that if you uh, miss payment, and then they will have the penalty charge, right, starting from the next month. And then when after six months, you're gonna have you you gonna lose your right to cast your vote in the general meeting. You can attend the meeting, no one can stop you unless if you start causing trouble. The, the management of the meeting or by the vote of the at, uh, attendees, they can vote for you not to be welcome. But by law, no one can stop you to, at, to attend the general meeting, even though you haven't paid for six months or over six months, but you cannot cast your vote. That's all. So, these are a little bit of this, a bit of that, that uh, I don't know if you all here knows about all this already, but this is the thing that I can advise you. What you must not do, again, if you not happy with the management, don't stop paying the common fee, okay? Pay the common fee, but then if you think that they misappropriate your money or embezzle your money, if you, as long as you don't know for sure, please continue paying it and get someone to make investigation, but that is about criminal, criminal uh, law or the civil law. It's nothing to do with the Con Condominium Act. We have to separate all this. Uh, and as the committee board, you must know your right, your, your limitation. Each committee member, as an individual, you've got no power. You have power when you have the committee meeting and when you are uh, appointed as, as etc. etc. Like, like you are appointed to be the treasurer, you are appointed to be an uh, uh, engineering, engineering committee or construction committee, something like that, then you have authority. But if not, if you don't have any, any title uh, in, at work, then you are just committee member who is going to be putting your brainstorm together when you have the meeting and then resolve the resolution by the vote. Majority of what in a meeting of the condominium, uh, sorry, of the committee, right? Uh, the, co the committee member must do, the chairman has a job to make sure that everything in the committee runs smoothly. Mr. Richard. <laughs> so when the committee needs to have the meeting, from if it's no less than two committee, deem that it should be committee meeting. The two committees have to contact the chairman to require a committee meeting. The chairman must uh, contact another committee members to gather the, the best dates and best time and best best uh, situation to hold the committee meetings. And then the chairman should summarize the agendas that the two committee members, at least two committee members, are required to have the committee meeting. Uh, the chairman is supposed to call the uh, contact all the committee members in the board and say, hey, we have been requested, or I deem that it's important that we have to uh, hold a committee meeting to consider, etc., etc., agenda one, two, three, four, and always end with other businesses, if any, just in case, right? And then after that, when the committee meeting start, you need to have the committee meetings attend attendance signature form to 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 uh, prove that the committee is really attend in person. If in some situation you cannot attend in person, the technology today the law allows the technology today, but it's just like again to have the video conference or the telephone conference. But but in some occasion when things go wrong, when the, re when the resolution is resolved and give out, given out and, 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 and the exercise has been started and then something goes wrong, that committee member who was attending the meeting when he was abroad, he, he would want to protect himself by saying that, I didn't vote for that, I didn't vote for that resolution. So this can be another risk. So that's why better that you have the committee attend in person 
However, if you trust the committee who stay abroad or stay up elsewhere, you can hold video <coughs> conference as well, as long as when he or she comes back before authorities, uh, before you have to submit any paper to the authority, you can get the person to sign a uh, meeting attendance signature to prove that he or she attend the meeting, even though by, by the video conference. There is so many things that have been changed, it's been upgraded to help the committee and help the management to run the condo business. Uh, what you must not do as the committee board, you must not uh, violate another law. <laughs> because in, in many times, I wrote, the people don't pay common fee for five or six months. Can we lock his door? You think can we lock his door? Yeah. No. no, because that gonna go. That's gonna commit a viol violation on intru uh, is that trespassing, right? Trespassing. So it's some kind of like that. So uh, co-owners and committees and management have to respect another law as well. Uh, constitution is supposed to be together with the Thai, sorry. Yeah. Thai constitution is the, is the biggest one. And then the acts, just like condominium acts, uh, okay. the courts, like criminal courts, civil, commercial and civil courts, etc., etc., royal, royal ordinance, royal enactment, uh, royal emergency decree, ministerial regulations, this, this has a lot of things to do with uh, condominium project developers when they decide to develop any condominium. I used to help uh, two condominiums, John Mutale, uh, sorry, John Tien Complex and Paradise, when high-rise building decided to pop up in front higher than 14 meters that allowed by law. And we checked the law, the ministerial regulations of the Minister, Minister of the Interior. Uh, issue 8 said that in that area you need to have uh, the setback area from the construction control line way in the sea. About 100, 100 meters, the setback is 100 meters from the construction control line onward, uh, inward onto the land. After uh, after the 100 meter setback, then high rise building can be constructed, right? In uh, By the Ministerial Regulations Issue 8 of the Interior Minister, uh, Ministry, my apologies, Ministry, it states that 100 meter from the construction control line. And then how can we find the construction control line? Where is it? Then we have to go to the uh, Marine Police and all this authority to get them to justify and specify and determine, determine, right? Determine <laughs> the construction control line. Regulation 8 say that it's a high tide. Marine police say a high tide. Two years after, Regulation 9 has been promulgated. And it say that to protect benefit of the of the, the people, the citizen, we make it 200 meters from the from the from the construction control line, the setback. So it means that the high rise building of the newer days cannot go closer to the sea or cannot go close to the closer to the sea than the older buildings, which are supposed to be fair, supposed to be reasonable. But then the way of people, of authority, official that interpret the law, make high-rise building go closer to the law, uh, to the sea. And I, I have been fighting about this for two condominiums, you know, and I got sued. I got the court case to take me to court for 100 million baht damage. <laughs> really 100 million baht damage, compensation. What happened is that, and then the, the one who suffered is the co-owners, because there's, when they bought the condominium, ten, twi almost 20 years ago, the, pro the, the developer said, hey, the law protect us. In front of us now to the sea, there is no way high-rise building can be constructed, apart from maybe eight floors of hotel, eight floors building, the highest. And then recently, high-rise building, like 40, 40 floors, 40 stories is being constructed. 
as you can see in front of Jopte complex, there is Mutale 7. 7. Yes. yes. In front of uh, Paradise, I can say this because I was there, so I, I know the name. Uh, in front of Paradise is Sitas. Yes, Sitas. The funny thing is that both construction, uh, both condominium projects, if I don't, if I'm not mistaken, they use the same company to do the EIA, uh, EIA uh, survey. Don't let me mention the name, I hate this name. <laughs> so, and again, the questionnaires are so lousy. It's nothing to do with the environment. environment. Not, don't, don't ask. They will ask the people around uh, to make sure that they say, yes, yes, we want the project to be built here because we want more people, more business, more clients, just like the bars around there, something. So, and then when the high-rise building pop up in front of you, the one who suffer the most are the co-owners. But what happened, we try to fight we try to take the authority to court through the administrative court. Uh, we still, the law here still doesn't really help us much because we talk to everybody. We even even went to the parliament and talked to the to the, one of the senators there in Bangkok, and they all agree with us that the law has been updated to protect Thailand seashore and the shorelines to make sure that no high rise building can be popped up, but then in reality it's popped up closer to the sea. And when we went to the administrative court in one case, they, of course, the defend, the, the, the plan receiver, uh, uh, the authority, they sent their own uh, engineer come and testify in court that, yes, your honor, we, 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 we calculate 200 meters, just like what the ministerial regulation said, but but from the concession control line, uh, we found out that the, the ministerial ministry declaration number nine, uh, the authority who would justify or determine, when you use the word determine or determine? Yeah. Determine? Determine, thank you. Or, or justify the construction control line, uh, shift it to mean sea level. From the first one say high tide, right? High tide 100 meter inward onto the land, where the high rise building more than 14, uh, 14 meters above the sea, above the, uh, the road surface cannot be constructed. Two years after Ministry, Ministry of Regulation issue nine has been promulgated, say to protect Thailand more, the shoreline more, make it 200 meters. But the authority, I listened to that with my own ears. I could not believe it. He said, I remember his name too. He said, yes, your honor, we do 200 meters, but from the construction control line, which is shipped to mean sea level, not the high tide anymore. Imagine this is the land, this is the sea. The high tide is close to the, to the road, right? For example, Chok Tien Beach Road, high tide really close to the road. In different seasons, it's a different place, a different spot too. It's difficult to just, just say where is it, but they just made it a guideline. Two years later, it shifted to mean sea level. It's mean in the middle between high tide and low tide. So, uh, when it's mean sea level, it's mean it's about 10 or 11 meters shift into the sea from the high tide level. Uh, it's supposed to be from this mean sea level, go 200 meters onward into the land. So the high rise building have to stay away, far away from the shoreline. Is that correct? What we understand, we understand we are on the same page. But this authority official said, yes, your honor, from mean sea level, we, count, we, we measure outward into the sea, 400 meters first. And then from that point, 100 meters, we make it 200 meters onto the land. And what, that, that, what, what does that mean? It means that the high rise building can shift 10 or 11 meters uh, uh, yeah, meter toward the sea than the, the older building. This, I experienced this myself, you know? And we have to get the uh, big uh, NGO organized the NGO in Bangkok to come and help us. We went to the parliament, we went to talk to one of the big senators, 
they all big professor they all agree with us that they are breaking the law but none of them willing to step forward to testify in court or even give the any any letters or any statement as a professor or as the one who understand so we lost the case we lost the case and then when we lost the case, of course, the project sued me at the JPM, 100 million <laughs> damage compensation. Yes, I've been sued 100 million baht. <laughs> but it's okay, I know it wasn't real. Uh, later they dropped the case out, never really have to go to court. They just want to scare us. Anyway, so that is my experience, uh, only one of them. Uh, so, and, and, and some of the things you co-owners have to take this into account. Committee board have to take this into account. Cannot just go and unlock or lock someone's door when they don't pay electric bill or water bill. You know, nowadays you cannot touch any electric meters of the co-owners anyway. It doesn't belong to co-owner. Doesn't belong to you. Belong to the uh, electric uh, station, right? But in some case, in some case, you can make the, the exception. It depends on the circumstances. Announcement order, provincial regulation, everything has to take into account. You cannot intrude or trespass path into someone's unit unless it's emergency and, and for the safety of all, maybe the JPM or the committee members, especially chairman, have to make decision. But you need to contact the authority, contact the police, contact someone to become your witness before you start doing something. Locking the car, the car wheel, is still violation violating the, the, the criminal law. You know, you have to, but there are ways to do so. That's why you need to have legal advice and, and guidance to protect yourself. Uh, buying a condominium in Thailand. Ownership in a foreigner's name. You all own in your own name? Yes, yes. Anybody have to set up company? Anybody have to put in some Thai's name? <laughs> well, I'm, I bet you have no problem. Yes, yes. So, uh, like we know, from in the 90s, uh, the foreigners' ownership, foreign ownership was 40%, and now it's upgraded to 49%. It means that in one swimming pool, the foreigners own 49%, and Thai's Thai's own 51%. But then in your in your own unit, do you know how much ownership ratios that you own? You own, you know, right? It's 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 uh it's right here at the second line. Oh, this is in Thai letter, in Thai in Thai number. <laughs> it 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 said right here, what is your what is your ownership ratio and what are the total ownership ratios. This one from Bangkok is one billion and one, one million five hundred seventy-seven thousand four hundred twenty ownership ratios. And this unit owner, he owns one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two point three two one seven three zero million ownership ratios. The common fee per year is about 25,000 baht, plus that, plus this. So, so yesterday when I talked to the co-owners from this condominium, they don't even know how much they own, uh, how much the common fee collection rate is. I said, I asked how much is your common fee collection rate. I need to can see the whole, I need to see the whole picture. The person doesn't know. Two or three of them, they don't know. They only know how much they pay per month, but they don't know how much the ownership ratios and how much common fee collection rate in their own condominium project. This is sad. This is sad because it means that uh, you have been uh, you have been misguided, you have been guided in the wrong way, you have been hidden of the facts and of the information you deserve to know and with your right you need to know all the information. This is why uh, it's a, bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit in my speech today. Uh, ownership in a Thai company's name. I think I don't have to speak much about this, no? 
you're gonna have to pay uh, the, 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 the tax every year, right? Ownership in a Thai nominee is there, just like <laughs> uh, someone who have the wonderful partner, I believe. Uh, the strong point, ownership in foreign ownership name, you have free hold, you can do anything you want in your own name, you, you, feel, you feel safe. The down point, nothing really much. But the Thai company name, you have to pay tax. And again, as, is, as you are the director in the company, uh, unless you get another shareholder to sign release all the shares to you, you still only own 49 maximum if you don't do that. But if you do that already, then you own 100%. As we understand already, yeah? But you still have to pay tax. In Thai nominee's Thai nominee name, we saw the situation, we, saw the, we, we, we heard the story before. I don't have to go through this, right? <coughs> Common problems when buying properties. Someone bought already, but uh, someone still have problems right now from all the ongoing problems. The real estate industry is unregulated. That we know for sure. Uh, there is no authority that really gonna take control of the of the real estate industry. That's why so many problems happen. I went to the court. I, I was hired as an interpreter to the court once just about recently and in the court eh, there were about another five or six uh, defendants the different different court case but against the same developer you know and we sit together okay my client damaged a lot a few million baht the rest five hundred thousand baht six hundred thousand baht bought bought into the bought the unit and the construction never finished and a lot of defects a lot of damages that they could never find a way to fix it because the construction standard was very, very low and ugly low. So these are the problems that are going for years and years and years. That's why people need to be aware, be aware that the real estate industry and the agency, the property agent, they are not regulated. Avoid one-stop service center. I don't mean that don't do it at all. I mean avoid, mean that you need to get the second opinion, the third opinion, to make sure you find whatever that really makes you feel the most comfort comfortable the most. Uh, the developer will say, you don't need a lawyer, this is a standard contract. Sign it, pay the money, and wait to see the construction start. That, in many cases, is already have uh, consequences on on the buyer, on on buyer, and then when things happen, when you sh take this contract standard, so-called standard contract, to your legal advice, you can see a lot of things that tie your hand. You can go, cannot get out. You cannot get out. You really cannot free yourself. Cannot solve the problem. Thailand issues four types of land titles, but in for the condominium, you, for the condominium, we are type number five. Condominium title deed, which you own land in the air. <laughs> you own land in the air, and you own the proportion of the common facilities, the common properties. That's why you have your your voice to talk in the general meeting. Avoid making a deposit. You cannot avoid that. Huh? You have to make the lowest deposit. This is for everything in life, right? Time translation into English into Russian. You need to have that. If the management has the very low budget, the common fee is only 10. Believe me, some place they'll collect 10 baht. How much for your common fee, you don't mind, I ask? 7,500 per studio. Per, 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 per square meter or per ownership ratio? 40 square meters per year. 7,500. All right. So basically, start from 30, 35, 40 baht per square meters. Yeah, standard. Somewhere in Pattaya, still 10 baht. So I say, 10 baht per square meters, and never had any chance for almost 30 years to increase the the common common fee because the co-owners always never acted enough to 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 give uh, the, the, to pass the resolution. If you want to increase or change the purpose of use over any property, over common property or common 
select a collection rate, you need to have at least 51 percent, 50 something percent in the first call of the general meeting. If the first call of general meeting cannot be open because less than 25 percent or one fourth of the co-owners attend that meeting on the first call, then you can open the second call within 15 days, and then the more the, the to pass this motion is down to 33.33333 percent, right? One third. In some condominiums, they cannot get cooperation from the co-owners. They still manage with 10 baht per one square meters, and that's on soy sayapur. And yeah, it, it's quite a lot. But then there are the special assessment that you can collect. Yes, collect for from time to time for the specific, specific uh, objective and purpose. Uh, doesn't change common collection rate, common fee collection rate. Uh, that's why you can do that. That is the way out. Condo development over 49% foreign ownership. Okay, we don't have to talk much about that. Not dealing with the owner or, or to owner's authorized agent. I talked about this before many times because uh, I used to help a uh, Russian man who trust the agent in Bangsare and gave her 2.4 million baht uh, to buy property called condominium and the house and then later, later found out that she used all the money but when he found out, he did not understand Thai law he did not know the Thai law Thai law said that for you to prosecute someone or squeeze someone to back down and ask for your forgiveness to withdraw the case, withdraw the charge I'll pay you the money, you know, you know what I mean. You need to take this to the police or sue or prosecute the person into court within three months. When, since the time you know who commit the crime and what crime they commit, and you already have the fact to prove that what you, what you, what, what you think is, is a fact, not just your own assumption. So when you have this, when you, you know, so. Like this lady, she admit later that, ah, oh, I have used your money because I have been in trouble. So I did not pay to the landlord. Now the house or the condominium unit is sold to someone else. Oh, 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 but I'll pay you back. Give me time. The person was working in Russia. He was a Russian engineer. He came in contact with her, trust her that she will pay the money. I will. I will go to the police, but she knew the law. So she stole the time until past three months because she had, she had an email conversation with him to prove that he knew from what day, the time that he accused her, that's the day that he knew. But she went until past three months and she turned around, you cannot do anything to me. So I'm not gonna pay you anything. When he came to us, it's already past three months of that she of meditation. So, firstly, we help we help him by taking this to by the civil first to gain regain the, the, the money back. But then afterward, he found a way to get him to prosecute her in the other way. At the end, he won the case, but she has nothing in her name. <laughs> you see, so many things that I have experienced. It's just a little bit of that, a bit of this. I cannot really put everything. In one, in one, in one go to talk about one thing. But I have to give you, share with you what I have experienced. There are so many things, uh, and this is why the person, the Russian engineer, hold the uh, judgment, but have to wait to try to find out and investigate and follow her and stop her to see whenever she start having any property at all. You know, and if you work for any government. And if you cheat someone, you lost the case. If your salary is less than twenty thousand baht, the law said no. After cut that, cut this already, right? Someone has uh, over hundred thousand baht salary, but then you have to pay the government loan. You have to pay that, pay this. If you can prove that all those expenses are fact and real, and if you have money left than less than twenty thousand baht in your pocket, and you lost the case, they still cannot take your money because the law said some the person has to eat. You know, so if this, this is the thing that people have to have to learn, I've learned a little bit of this, a little bit of that every time. Responsible party.
for fees and expenses at registration time of this. Ah, this is me. <laughs> this is me. I like I said I'm not a lawyer. Uh, they call me a wing girl. I carry my clients not to fall. I carry carry my clients to, to fly higher and fly higher. You know. So in, in many cases, uh, uh, just like condominium project on soil, on soil ten of privacy, you know, 85 million baht, that in the case, the capital of, of, capital of the, uh, capital of this case, 85 million baht to get the money back because the project never been finished and the land is being sell, sold to someone, sold to someone, sold to someone, and then the, the unit owners who invest into this 16 units group together the capital sum of the case is 85 million baht came to us for the case and then before I got involved uh, the client talked to his lawyers and his lawyers seemed to understand everything and when it just two days before we have to go to trial they called me for the first time that I got involved hey Rose can you come and help us read and translate all this statement for the client because in two days we're gonna go for trial and I read and translate everything to the client. He said, whose case is this? This is not my case. And it's been ongoing for over one year. And then it means it's almost too late. Whatever you submit in the court, whatever you write in your statement in the court, it must be the fact. And if your lawyer misunderstand the nature and the complex of your case, then you, you in back be big problem because then you cannot fix it. You cannot say, oh, dear owner, I, I made a mistake, let me change. Cannot do like that in the court of law, right? So in that case, almost too late. But luckily, finally, after three years after, he got, he got, he as a group, uh, mediation, all, and it's a long time, got 65 million baht back, cut out the interest and things like that. So, yeah. So that is another thing that I said, uh, when you have any problems, contact your lawyer. But if you are not sure your lawyer really understand the nature of your case, the complication of your case, find someone who can help you with understanding. Maybe just only the first time or the second time, first or second time, spend a little money, just like hire me, hire someone else who can help you interpret to your lawyer and help the lawyer to talk and make sure you understand what he's trying to say. In many cases, the damage is already too almost tremendous and serious, far more than the client can be can be can find remedy. Okay. Uh, let me read this. What you must know: if you seek a condo unit to be your home, you must or you should gather the following essential information. I talked about that already before making decision. Uh, to purchase the unit. As in many cases, the condo unit buyers or you suffer many problems created by unprofessional or dishonest project developers and or dishonest uh, uh, developer agents, agents just like I just gave you an example. About the project, surrounding areas, neighborhood, licenses must be taken into account as I spoke about this already. About facilities, maintenance fee, you need to know. Sinking fund. The committee cannot use sinking fund. <laughs> sinking fund is gone. Where is it? Many, many, many condominium uh, juicy person, the corner said, sinking fund is gone. Where is it? Of course, management can use sinking fund if it is uh, for emergency, but they have to have the proper record. Cannot just like say it verbally and let, let the co owner believe. They have to have uh, the record that fire start in these wings of the town. We don't have enough money. We have to use sinking fund. Sinking fund, just like we did in Bangkok, uh, 40 million baht sinking fund. Very good, huh? 40 million baht sinking fund. They have to use for that, for this, for this. And then at the end, they bring. The next year, general meeting, they brought, they brought this uh, report to the co-owners at the AGM. 
and report that we have been used. This is this some owners criticize that that's not an emergency. You have no right. You should wait. But anyway, it's still another 30 million baht left. So in the at the meeting, the co-owners have the right to make the uh, consideration to recollect the, the money back to 40 million baht or to spend at 30 million baht. Everything can be done through the direction of the co-owners, through the consideration of the co-owners. So which this is that's why we need the strong and honest and transparent management and committee board and the most important is the JPM, Jewish Person Manager. Uh, you all have problems with all this sometimes, especially your condo, not your condo, his condo, <laughs> but now it's getting in a bit better direction. Yes, you have to know about law and regulations, I talked about that already. Uh, main common problems, I, I'm not going to go for all this much about being regulated and most dangerous thing the buyers realize about the problems when all the money is paid to the developer yet the building is still not ready even though it has passed the completion date blah 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 we all know we all know all that already so are we open for the question or not no oh did uh, did i do okay anybody yes. have confusion? <laughs> We have two mics, uh, with Christian and with Bob, so please put your hand up for uh, any questions, right, the first one in the front. Thank you for the talk. Um, you spoke a lot about people who have difficulties after they bought. What advice would you give to someone who's found a condo that he likes and he goes down to the office? What information can he access and what should he be allowed to see? in order to help them make decisions and avoid the problems you described. Thank you. Uh, if it's at the pre-construction time, then you're going to be with the developer, correct? You're talking about pre-construction, or it's already registered at the condominium, JP, and you want to buy the condo from someone else? Yes. Okay. Mr. A on unit A, 304 and he wants to sell. Is that your example? Your, your example? Yes. Uh, the potential buyer needs to go to the office and of course, of course first you talk to Mr. A first. What, is, what are the facilities? What are the common fee collection rates? Any debt that you owe or not? Uh, but when, of course, when, when he wants to sell, well, your deposit gonna pay for his debt anyway. You <laughs> pay off to get the debt release, debt release form to be able to, 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 to share the ownership. Uh, the potential buyer need to go to the office too and ask about the common fee collection rate, uh, uh, the management uh, policy. Mm -hmm. The management policy you can check about, did they fall, you can check and see if they have followed the condominium act. Accounts? Yeah, and number three, uh, did I say common properties, common facilities already? The account mm, that you can ask that have you been you can you can ask for the minutes of the meetings the previous minutes of the meeting it will show account but if you ask too much about this inside information I don't think you will get much of the answer but you can ask for the for the uh, copies of the previous minutes of the meetings of the general meetings that will give you a lot of a lot of uh, big big view to see. Yes. In, in condominium law, is the office obliged to have available the accounts yes. for public view? Not for public view. Public view is mean for the co-owners, not for outsider. For a prospective buyer, cannot change May, the office. Yeah, you can, you can talk to them. If they say, ah, 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 then you can talk to them. <laughs> but you're still not the inside, you're still not an inni yet. You know what I mean, right? So they can be say that, okay, I will give to Mr. A. You can ask for Mr. A. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Excuse me, Raj. Can I just um, add, a, add a little bit to what you was asking? Um, if you have a responsible condominium, they usually produce a yearbook, which includes the minutes of the previous year, but also includes the annual accounts. 
So Mr. A, as a co-owner, would have that yearbook, and he can show you that, for example, it's not a bankrupt condominium, because you can then check it in the assets and liabilities of the, of the annual report. Okay? You should also check the regulations document of the condominium, uh, because they normally copy uh, quite faithfully the you know, condo acts, but they fill in the gaps of the condo acts with their own regulations, which are registered in the land office. So you can pick up uh, some quite useful detail if you can live in that condominium with its you know, actual regulations and rules of that building. Okay, because uh, you usually use, uh, sorry Ruth, but, uh, I'm the deputy chairman of a condo for quite a few years, so I use the condominium act every week, right? We usually use three documents. We use the original condo act of 1997, the amendments to it of 2008, and the individual regulations of our building. And between the three, you then get the answer to anything that's, that's asked. Thank you. I'll ask you later which condominium you live in. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you. I want, I want to come to regulation or by your book. You need to ask you need to ask that too. So you can go home and study. You can help the the, the the big picture, how strong and how transparent that the management here has been. Too much work on that part here. You you mentioned you mentioned about uh, people not paying their uh, community charge, right? No. If you have a person who's living in a condominium, right, and he just completely refuses to pay his community charge, what are the ramifications of it? Now, I live in a village, right, and we, I, I know the ramifications there, but in a condominium, how does it work? Is there a, a statute of limitations? How far you can go back if he wants to sell the, uh, the unit? Or have you got to go to the land office the, uh, to make sure that before he sells that property, or when he sells that property, he pays the community charge in full? Thank you. Uh, you can go back there for five. Do you understand that, what I'm saying? I think <laughs> if I answer you in the wrong direction, it means I don't. <laughs> then you can correct me. Right now, I think I do. Uh, you can go back there to regain or yeah to, to regain sorry, the common fee five I years. Five years, that's yes, right. Five years. And you can only go on five years. Yes. So if you also for ten years, you can only claim five years, is that correct? If it's longer than five years, you can point the finger back to the management. How lousy have you been <laughs> how you have you been managing? You're gonna have to pay the damage. You can maybe sue them. <laughs> if they haven't done their job correctly and have and, 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 and let this money lost after five years, then maybe co-owners have to get together and, 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 and uh, what do you call, uh, pursue, some, to to some, pursue some liability from the management if they let that lousy. Yeah, but the, pro the problem is the person who's, he can still live in the complex, right? He can still live there, he can still use all the facilities. Well, he's not supposed to. But who can who can control that? That's your biggest problem. Good he's, question. He's allowed access to his property, but is he allowed? Like I live on a village. Now we have the same problem there. As far as I'm concerned, that person is allowed to walk onto the to his house, but not fetch his car into the into the property because that is common land which is owned by the people, and he has, they have refused to uh, pay the community charge. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, before the law allowed the, the, the management to cut, out, cut off electric water, well, and then, yeah, someone died from it. Because people need to store their hot yeah. medication yeah. in the fridge. That's why with the Supreme Court uh, uh, verdict, or an order came out that you really cannot cut that kind of uh, what you call basic needs utility. Yeah, but you can cut the facility, uh, uh, the 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 right to enjoy the facility that you can cut if you have that kind of technology in your condo to stop them from using. But if you just like a, a normal condo that doesn't have 
anything else but swimming pool. And swimming pool is in open area. The person can just jump in and out and no one wants to challenge him. <laughs> that is another thing. But if you have the, the key card door thing that you can, yeah, just like your village, you can use the technology. You can adopt technology, high technology, so you can control the people in your, in your community to pay. Uh, condominium, they have penalty charge. After one month, you have to pay like 1.67%. One, 1. After six months, then each month, about well, 1% after that. So basically, no more than 12% of the penalty charge for people who in area for less than six months, and no more than 20% per annum for the people who in area for more than six months. Yeah. yeah. The other question I've got, you, you mentioned about taking over these uh, units, uh, condominium, where you said they haven't had a committee or anything for 17 years. Now, sure, no, I don't know, maybe you know, but as that, the people who own the property, have they been paying a community charge and or not? Because the, after 17 years, the property would be well and truly run down if it's I haven't got uh, deep into the information about that yet. That how many percent? I asked yesterday, uh, how much is the percentage of people who pay and not pay? Uh, of course, if they don't know how much they pay per square meters, of course they cannot give me that kind of answer yeah. because they are not inside the inside. They are not in me. Uh, even though two of committee members were at attending, and they were they were the one who brought the issue to us because they felt like something has been something is totally wrong, uh, managed wrong in, in this area, and they are, they are the committee members themselves. So, uh, what was your, problem? Your, your question again? It was very basically, how are we going to uh, chase that money? Because obviously someone has got that in their hand, and they've been, they've been paying it for the 17 or 17 years. So you, you're going to have to set up probably a criminal case against the guy, would you? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I uh, first you mentioned about they haven't been having the meeting or the committee board for 17 years. Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I advised the meeting yesterday that we could have to sue the land official <laughs> for not doing their job. <laughs> so, and they start laughing. It could be, it could be the way, yeah. you know, through the administrative court. How can you let this go for 17 years and don't? try to do something. But anyway, because no co-owners ever ever challenge the people or the management there. And uh, the land official, they are just just too busy being fabulous. <laughs> too busy to think about us. They are so busy with every day's task until they cannot look at your condominium that if the management has uh, manage the place properly or not, unless someone with the legal, uh, uh, with the proper legal uh, mind, who can talk to the co to the land official and get their attention. But so far, at this co at this current project, still has no co-owners who really know how to talk to the land official. That's why it's been going on like this for 17 years since 2535. Now today is uh, 2562. Sorry, Bob, was somebody waiting at the back? I wasn't sure. You have someone? No, go ahead. Okay. Right, Richard, you mentioned something about the rule book. Where are you? Yeah. In the front. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, where do you get this rule book and what do you ask for? Can you say it? Uh, in the individual condominium regulation, uh -huh. where do you get it? Because my developer knows nothing about it. If you don't get it from the, if the office is supposed to have copy for you. So I think he's talking about one that's under development. It, it, it does not exist until it's registered as a condominium. Ah, so it's registered as a condominium and then it's yeah. available. Once the condominium gets going, the regulations document is then given to all the owners. Right. right. But not in the development stage. Yeah. Thank you. One more thing. He says it's illegal, uh, sorry, it's illegal to turn off the electricity supply to a condo for any reason. Is that correct? Is it yes. illegal to turn uh, off? Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm just checking because the condo next door, which is by the same developers, has got this rule 
you put any washing on the balcony, your electricity will be turned off and there will be a fine. <laughs> the policy can be implemented, but if someone really know the law to go challenge it, this is a different thing. Yeah. Yeah, so depends because some 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 condominium project they they own they 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 bought their own transformer or big big meter is their own. And then electricity from the P P A supply to the main big meter of the condo and then big meter supply to all the yeah. unit uh, uh, meter that when the management thought that we could cut from our big meter to there but 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 just like they said uh, the court de uh, deemed that this is the life saving or basic need utility that you cannot really go there find something else you know so I hope that answers you yes. in, the, in the middle yeah hi um, in regards to remedies uh, for uh, the condo owners not paying their uh, fees um, and of course you know you, you've talked about the electronic uh, ability to keep people out of common areas. Um, what other remedies exist um, for those people who do not pay the condo fees? Oh, you mean uh, a penalty charge, penalty sanction, something like that, yeah? Oh, depends on what you have adopted in your communities, actually. Um, the lift, if you have the lift with the key card, is a different thing. If you have security card, very strong, you can instruct security card not to open. It's just so many things. If, if your condo doesn't have so high technology uh, uh, system to, to uh, make the life of the, of the residents very comfortably, then you need to have, then you cannot do much. But if you have a lot of high technologies with the key cards and control system, then you can do a lot you're, more. You're, you're, you're talking about just locking them out of uh, uh, common areas with uh, some sort of electronic control key fob. That's what you're saying is the only remedy. No, not only. Okay, so on that's, that's, that's my question. My question is, what is the other remedy? By, by, law, by law, the penalty charge will be start, char start charging from the after one month of the of the late payment, and that will be accrue, accrue interest. Uh, but that basically depends on what you have in the in the in the condominium project. What kind of facility you have? The, actually, I cannot give you any more answer at the moment un unless I know what different project have the different technology, different facilities to provide to the co-owners. You really well, cannot I stop just, I was just asking in regards to the law. The law, the law, you have to take so many laws into account. You can stop the person not to walk into your territory. If you don't, if you don't want to consider that walking into the hallway to go to his unit is a basic need that he's supposed to do so every month, every day, then you can try to stop the person to, if you don't have anything else to punish him, are you so, 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 like for instance, uh, entering the condo, you have to have the key fob to, to get into the condo. If that person's not paying, could the condo association essentially not grant them access to their own condo? Uh, the key card? Use a key card, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, you can, you can. So that you is can. The, the first thing, the, pri the, the primary thing that people want to do is to cancel the key card. The person has, it's just like name and chain, it's just like humiliation. You know, the person has to wait until someone walk in to just sneak inside and sneak out. Uh, that, that kind of thing we already, most, most of us know already that the condominium management will try, try to do. If you have key card system, first you cancel the access and humiliate the person. And, 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 yeah. that's, and that's all totally legal, right? It's legal. That's okay. absolutely legal. So the only thing that's illegal is, is to turn off water and electricity. Yes. Yeah. 
it is is a different case, different situation. Try not to go there. <laughs> more, more or less, the manager will be the one who just got the big eyes, angry eyes from the court. But if you have the proper reason, why not? Uh, just one other question. There's no, uh, there's no other remedy to look. Like in, in my condo, there's um, you know, people who haven't been there for a long time, don't care. Is there any way the condo can take that, the condo association or whatever, can they take that condo from this person who doesn't exist or whatever? Yeah, until if it's no longer than five years, you can take the case into court and try to uh, uh, enforce sale of that, of that unit. Only the court said, if you want to sue someone, you better get the clear address. The court has to protect the rights of the defendant as well. You're going to have to find, you have to go out of your way to talk to immigration, talk to his or her embassy, so to try to find the clearer, clearest address. And you have to show the court, you have to try your best in so many ways to reach the person already. And if you still not, you can freeze and, and, and pursue the case, uh, pursue the unit, try to enforce sale. And all you can get is whatever the, the, the person owes you the rest, you have to find the, the, the heir or the heiress. If you cannot, you have to leave with the execution office, just leave it there. The rest of the money, yeah. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, we'll have to close there because it's been an hour and a quarter, which is a bit of a world record. <laughs> um, but we've also got to get out of the done. So we'll thank you very much at this point, Rose. Just go talk to Rose personally. Okay, I'm going to sit here. You'd like to talk to me? Yes, yes. I'm going to give us a song, Rose. <laughs> <laughs> you said you're on 96. <laughs> Right, we've got one lucky draw today. Uh, free entry next week. Can we get the number, please? Winning number is 8957. 8957. Please have your yeah. member card out.